who needs a high gain antenna? Keep it simple, keep it real. Now this could be a rhetorical question or hypothetical question, but actually it's quite an important one and it's not just helium. This question relates to any type of application because we always see this debate online about low gain, high gain. And this morning I actually got a question, someone said, but your 3 dBi antenna is more expensive than a 6 dBi. Why? Uh, gain doesn't necessarily mean better, it means more specific for a specific application. And in this case, today I'm going to just do a demonstration of a um, Helium IoT uh, quick upgrade of an Omni antenna to turn it from a dipole into a 9 dBi Yagi antenna. But the principle that I want to illustrate going forward is also high gain is a feature, it's not an upgrade. That's the most important thing for me. Now this of course applies to Wi-Fi, 4G, 5G, and it also applies to, there goes my antenna. It also applies to um, any, any application that you have. And today, more so, it applies to Helium. So I just want to quickly pause this video. I was outside outdoors when I was shooting the actual video itself and there's obviously a lot of stuff going through my head as I present the um, concept. The thing what I'm doing here is a university lecture tutorial that I kind of demonstrated and wanted to, to prove here. So it's, it's kind of an antenna modification such as this. Um, in my title I say you can get up to 11 dB improvement, which is correct, but there are certain conditions for that. So watch through the whole video, see at the end how I come to that number and also the um, actual way that you can apply the same logic for yourself. So what I'm showing here is not just something that somebody in, in, a, in a wacky car parked it, but it's actually something that really got you an actual result that you can also have significant better directional antenna instead of a typical um, stock Omni antenna. Keep watching till the end and you'll see what's going on. What we work through is the actual radiation pattern and the plot. So on the screen, I'm now going to throw the um, actual waves of what you originally have. So when you have an Omni antenna, as we all know, I guess, um, it just basically transmits or sends the signal in all directions. You, you, you assume in a good antenna, it goes everywhere. Now, what we do when we convert it to a directional antenna, you take the wave that goes everywhere and you just let it flow in one specific direction. That's what we manipulate, that's what we can control as antenna designers. Um, you may see three-dimensional plots on data sheets. I have it on the screen. The problem with 3D plots, if you look at it on a two-dimensional print, which you can do because that's a piece of paper, if you don't see it, you struggle to visualize it. I'm showing there what we call azimuth and elevation. Azimuth means looking from the top so you can see how it radiates all around, or when you look at it from the side, how it just basically has this bubble effect in all directions. Conversely, the antenna that we're going to create alternatively is directional, so you push all the energy in one forward direction, both if you look from the side or from the top. Um, the easier way to explain this is on the 2D plot. This is the Omni, which is a circle in all directions or directional in one direction. If you look at it from the side as well, it's a bubble in both directions or basically pushes everything into one side. Now, that's really it. But again, I, I just go back to this, the um, actual waves, which I think for video purposes is probably the simplest way to explain what I'm about to do to a stock helium antenna using nothing but paper, pieces of metal, and some glue. Um, what I'm gonna do, this is this kind of, this is the first of many videos. This one is just to say, this is possible, and I will prove this was my test setup. But on subsequent videos, I'll do the helium now to say there's a template, which I'll put on our website, that you can download and just follow the instructions, and you can also convert the, um, your stock antenna to a highly directional antenna while you wait potentially for another one. Or you could um, potentially use this if you want to have a test setup for something. Um, subsequently, I'm going to do the same for 4G and 5G, first Australia, then also US, and if there's any interest from, the, from Europe as well in specific bands, I will do that as well. The thing is, these antennas would be frequency um, selective, so they won't, this one won't work in a 4G frequency as well. It might a little bit, but it's not really designed for that. And then of course Wi-Fi is a big one, because you can do the same thing on Wi-Fi. It's going to be much smaller, so probably much more elegant and easier to use. What I have here is my test setup. I have a VNA, which is a vector network analyzer, the blue box here. Um, it's from MagicQ, a company in the Netherlands. Um, I'm going to do some demos on that um, setup as well soon enough, but this is kind of a, I'd say a poor man's test of an antenna setup, and it kind of works 
works quite well, but there is an issue, and I can show you the issues as well, but we can work through that. Um, so the vector network analyzer is sending a signal from one port to one antenna, then it transmits everywhere, the other antenna picks it up and sends it back to the VNA. What we have on the computer screen is basically the effect of that, that loop. So again, I was outside and, and I was trying to demonstrate, I still am trying to demonstrate you have two antennas and you're trying to communicate between the two, but I refer to S21. Now S21, if you look at um, typical in helium in this case, the example would be um, like, like you have path loss and you say, well, the RSSI at the other point is minus 110 or minus 120 dBm. What actually that number is that I say, that I refer to and that I demonstrate in the video itself is something like, let's say, minus 40, minus 30. Basically, in an un, um, not calculated, uncalibrated way, it is just giving you a reference to say from antenna A, let's say there's antenna A, to antenna B, without any calibration, without anything done, there seems to be a loss of that 40 dB of power, of signal. And it's a relative measurement. When you calibrate it, you can actually say, okay, well, the level should be there, should be there. What you see through the frequencies, that is always going to be the same. Well, the effect that antenna would have that you change will then be the same over the whole thing. But the offset, like if it's um, the cables are bad or the distances are longer or shorter between each other, they will all have uh, a significant impact on the level of the whole signal. But S21 is just a power transfer number. So it says, it gives you an indication and an understanding that over that frequency that I'm looking at, how much power am I transferring from this point to that point? And it's just a relative number. So once you have the screen with the number, that's what you say, well, this is what I know I have. And then you start to change stuff and you will see things move up and down. Continue with the video. See, if I move around, like now, you'll see the, um, the wave, the results are actually you know, jumpy. It, it goes all over the place because Mainly, this antenna is an Omni, and I'm uh, outdoors. Uh, there's a lot of reflections from the gate on that side, which you can't see, the building on this side, which you huh, also can't see. We have the vehicle at the back, um, and everything is having an effect. That's why you need an anechoic chamber, an a chamber that basically absorbs all the reflections. When you do the measurement, people also go out of the chamber so that you don't have the effect of anything else than your antenna talking to the other antenna and you can measure in a nice clean environment what's going on. You remove all reflections. Today, this is what we have, this is what we're going to use. First thing that I found really interesting um, as I was building the setup, but I just want to show you this before I do the actual demonstration of the, um, the concept is, you see it, it is quite bumpy, so it, um, it goes up and down, up and down over frequency. If I move this around, um, I'll just move it up and down. You actually see how that, that wave moves. It's almost like linear, and that's exactly the problem. So, as a good salesman, I'll put my marker, which is in the middle at 915, right on the dip. Why? Just because that's where it looks at its weakest, and I get probably reflections from the back. When I put a directional antenna on, I'm running for bus there. When I put a directional antenna on, it's going to mainly focus on that antenna. Any reflections that I could have had from the back will have a lot, much less of an impact. So, as a good salesperson, what an antenna company would do is that kind of thing, where they look at that, say, oh man, just look at that. This is the weakest. When I modify that, it's going to look so much better. Um, I might as well do that, because that's cool. But you can see, if I move it, I just move it a little bit, and it's just smooth as it moves through. And this is the kind of effect that I... Um, that you need to monitor and assess, and something you can't do if you don't have a VNA in your antenna setup. So high gain directional has its, its obvious advantages, not so much just for the forward gain, but also the fact that it's actually eliminating reflections from the back. So I just want to stop on this actual plot here and just put it on the screen again. The, um, what you see is that ripple effect that I go through, and I'm obviously very excited when I shoot the video, and I still am, that the fact is when you move the antenna around, you actually see that ripple. Um, it's like a snake almost going through the actual frequency, um, the relative frequency positions. Now, the ripple itself is a significant problem, um, and I, I just want to stand still on that, that point as well. The ripple is because of the reflections that you could see in a in a non-ideal environment. 
real life is a non-ideal environment. So everywhere you go, that's the kind of thing that you will, you will see. You know, you remember when you, or you not remember, you might know that when you walk around, your phone might fade, like go weaker and stronger. Not so much these days, the phones are better, but, but like in the old days or so, you would have had this fading effect that you might experience. Um, the only way to get around this if you do an antenna measurement like what we do there, or I did there, is basically to go into an anechoic chamber. So put, put sorts of absorber around it, or to go really remote and rural that you, there's nothing that can reflect. Um, as a user, an antenna installer, and this is now relevant for helium as much as it is for 4G, and well, if you had the luxury of Wi-Fi to do this, it probably is not practical, but go high. So you get your antenna away from obstructions. You get your antenna away from stuff that's going to cause trouble um, over the trees, away from the gate, away from the house, away from the walls, away from the glass, all that stuff. Well, this effect that you see is really the effect. Um, it's just that's the, a, a nice visual way to demonstrate the effect that, that um, reflections will have. It also ties into a video I've done last year, late last year, about reflections. Um, that's an extreme example where you don't want to put an antenna against a metal pole. It's an extreme example, but it's the same principle again, that that's the kind of thing that happens is these reflections in, in, in phase, out of phase, will cause that ripple. What is also interesting, and now I'm just going on a tangent that's probably not useful enough, but the positive side is also potentially higher than what actually can be expected because you would have constructive and destructive interference. So there's a lot of stuff happening in that plot, so much more than what I could actually afford to say in here, and I've probably already said it much, so let's carry on. This antenna that I have on me, the one that I created, the one that I will make in future designs, it converts my dipole into a Yagi. I have a reflector, I have room for my actual radiator, my element, and I have the directors in front. This is what we design using CST. In using CST we could calculate this and we can work it out and then we just, I'll put it on a piece of paper. Those metal rods that I use can be kind of anything. I use them spare or scrap uh, cable but you could use pieces of wire or anything from home so this is a piece of cotton this is obviously my printed design that I put on there I put the measurements on there that you can then use for yourself um, and just work it out put it where I tell you to put it because I have the markings on there and there is two slots now the two slots I will explain in the um, next video but I'm not outside because with the wind blowing it's quite hard to actually get it to work properly I'm just going to put it in position against the antenna so as I say this is what's going to happen there's the antenna I'm going to just put it that the dipole is there so that all the spacing is correct see what happens put it against it just like I converted to a doggy there we go and gone take it away put it back take it away huge effect now if I move the position this is where the reflections are really causing trouble you can move it this way it's not worse it's my worst. Again, whatever I do, I smooth it out and I gain as much as I want, as much as I need. Now, because it's outdoors, it's not always going to be smooth, but you get the effect. This is what it does. And you can do the same on yourself, for yourself, anyway. So if I move away, ah, man, this thing fell over. I'm also having a huge impact. So really, I do want to actually put the rubber band on there. There we go. That's the effect. That's all I could say. Works like a dream. Pretty happy with that. Okay, now I've, I've presented the results and I kind of just pointed and waved at the results and really excited about, look at this, this is happening, it's making such a big difference and it's such an improvement and I have this antenna on my hand, which is the one here with me. Um, I just want to stand still by it again and just say, you should really look at it with um, almost with a fine tooth comb because the scales on the plot, the, the Magic Q device that I have, is the, the scale is what it is. So you don't get an appreciation for how much that actually um, jumps. So I just have the slide that I put on the screen now to just have it as a static image to say, hang on, look at this. Because what you would normally do, if, if I was writing an engineering report and I was actually trying to highlight this effect, I wouldn't use the scale that, that that's available on the machine itself. I wouldn't go from, um, no, zero to minus 50 or plus 10 to minus 50 because then the actual impact that you're seeing is not highlighted enough. Um, so on the screen you'll see that of course I've positioned it such as in the middle of a dip. That is 
could feel like a bit of trickery, but it actually was genuinely there to show that this is how bad things could be. And then the improvement, the plot on the right, the after is real. Because once you eliminate reflections from the back, because the antenna no longer is really sensitive towards what's happening at the back, it's just really focused on going forward, which is kind of uh, directional antenna 101 just there. Um, so the plot on the right is theoretically man, that's what I want, that's what you need, and this is the antenna that you will get, or the type of thing that you will get. The plot on the left is what kind of, I'll try to break it as bad as I can, because in the same broken, broken position, you have the antenna, you have the antenna before, like, I could have just said like that almost, and then after. It's the same antenna, in a, if you put it in the right place, that's the kind of effect, that's the kind of improvement that you get, so... I just wanted to stand still on that fact and make sure that it really um, kind of, you know, that you absorb it in, the, the improvement that this kind of impact can have. And of course, go to our website and um, you can download this template for Helium and there's more templates that will come for Helium for Europe and um, 4G and Wi-Fi as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll make more build videos. Um, there's going to be a build video for the Helium ones soon um, and we'll, we'll do build videos as well for the other ones. But um, anyway, let's continue with the video and just put a rubber band on and we'll see what it does. I'll put this at the back so that my, um, I don't have my hands actually interfering. Oh yeah, rubber band is on, antenna's in position, Yagi's up, wind is blowing it over. Uh, that's how I get it there. There you go. My yog is up. Let's look at the result. There we go. That's that. There we go. That's why I go inside to do the rest of the video. Another thing, because now it's there, but my hand is somewhat in the way, just to show the directionality. I turn this away, if the wind actually allows me to turn it away. This is it. That's how low it goes. Um, considering there's reflections and the wind is constantly blowing, um, one thing here that I do want to note while it's still rolling and I in, unintentionally is still doing, doing a recording, um, this is obviously an experimental antenna, it's an indoor antenna, it's something you could use to see is my antenna going to benefit from a high gain antenna. Um, it's not a permanent setup, but it's definitely for indoors, before you spend money on buying a 9 or 8 or 6 dBi antenna, just try to see, is this going to work? And potentially, I had an inquiry this morning from a customer who said, he's just getting a lot of interference from somewhere, he doesn't know where. And I said, well, you know what, you need to watch this video, build one of these antennas and um, test. Because what I've just done was a negative test by turning away, what it gives you is ability to see where is it working, where is it not working. And where it's not working, you can kind of just deduce, deduce, deduct, figure out where your problems are, and then invest in an expensive antenna once you've got your head around this. So let's try again. Thanks for watching. <laughs> See you in the next video. Bye-bye.